that's the information that's in your charter and that will help orient us to what it is that we'll be doing together today. Um, after we discuss what our purpose and task is for today, we'll have two presentations. One will be from our uh, City of Lake Oswego project manager, Jenny Anderson. Um, and then we're going to hear from the design side from um, Stephen Tuttle, who's from McKenzie, our designer. Um, and those two presentations are going to give you a little bit of background to the site, um, why it's important, and, and what kind of uh, issues that we're looking at in this project. Um, after that, we're going to have a Q&A discussion, and I want to make just two points about that uh, section of our agenda. The first is that that's the, the right place to have questions. So as we're going through the presentation, um, unless you have a clarification question, if you can just hold your idea until the end, that way we can have a discussion um, about all of the different questions that we're going to be asking and that you might be asking to the project team. Um, also, my second note about that section is that we're going to try and build in a little bit of a, a break in there. So we'll, we'll hopefully have about five minutes for everyone to go and get some water, take a bio break. Um, when we come back together, my colleague uh, Zach Johnson and I are going to run through uh, the project website as well as our first open house, the results of our public survey. Um, after that, we'll discuss our next steps, um, any agenda items or next tasks, and wrap up for the evening at uh, 545. Okay, and so that said, I'm hoping that we can have a brief introduction to each other. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, we're going to just go around the room and you can state your name, uh, give me your pronouns, uh, give me your role. If you're representing um, a board or an organization, let us know that. Um, and then last, just as a warm up, um, tell me your favorite sport. And so I will go ahead and if you wouldn't mind, it uh, looks like Scott, you are in my little grid, the next person uh, next to me. Do you mind starting us off? Not, not at all. Hey, um, Scott Bullard. Um, I'm representing the Parks and Recreation and Natural Resources Advisory Board and see some familiar faces here. Jeff and uh, Megan, how you doing? And uh, Mackenzie, you're no, you're no stranger either. Um, so uh, look forward to it. Um, that's it. Favorite sport, uh, fly fishing. Thanks. Nice. Thank you, Scott. Um, next, could we hear from Travis? Oh, it looks like Travis, you're not unmuted quite yet. All right. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm Travis Schoonover. I'm the um, um, Director of Youth Development um, at Lake Oswego Soccer Club. Uh, and I guess my favorite sport would be soccer, but. Nice. <laughs> um, okay, next on my grid, I have Steven Tuttle. Although it looks like Steven has a special symbol next to his name, means that he might be having some technical difficulties. Um, and so why don't I go ahead and move to Randall and then we'll hopefully pick Stephen back up if he's able to join us. I mean, it looks like Randall, you're still on mute as well. Uh, my name's Randy Yamada and I'm here to represent the uh, Stafford Hamlet and CPO. It's the area just outside of Westland and Lake Oswego to the uh to the south or to the southwest so and my favorite sport is either basketball or golf nice um okay next it looks like uh jenny anderson hi everybody i'm jenny anderson um i work with parks and the city of lake oswego as a project manager on this project um, and my favorite sport would be soccer. Great. Um, it looks like next I have Andrew. Yeah, hey, everybody. Uh, Andrew Schneider. I am a landscape architect with McKinsey. I'll be providing support with Stephen. Um, and my favorite sport is hockey. Hmm. Nice. Um, so it looks like next on my screen um, is uh, Jeff. 
I'm uh, Jeff Monroe. I'm the Park and Rec Deputy Director, and my favorite sport is pretty much all of them. <laughs> nice. Um, it looks like next on my grid, I have Curtis. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Curtis Adago. I'm on the board of directors for Lake Oswego Youth Lacrosse. And I'd say my favorite sport, of course, a little bit lacrosse, but love soccer, love hockey, love them all. I love sport, golf too. There you go. <laughs> nice to meet everyone. Nice. Thank you. Um, it looks like next, uh, Ivan. Hi everyone, um, Ivan Anderholm. I'm the Parks and Recreation Director for the City of Lake Oswego. Um, I'm I'm a fan of all sports. Um, I love to sit in the bleachers and watch baseball. Um, also like to watch uh, football on on TV, and I'm also a fan of uh, snowboarding, skiing, uh, cycling, skateboarding, pretty much anything. Nice. Um, next time I go to have Katie. Hi guys, can you hear me? Sorry, I was a little late. Uh, I'm Katie Allen. I'm on the board for Pacer Youth Baseball. I have a T-baller that just started. So just join the board. Um, my daughter is also uh, plays for the Renegades and played for Lake Oswego softball as well. So um, my favorite sport is baseball and softball. We're a baseball family. So my husband's a coach at Lewis and Clark College. Um, my brother like helps with the Seattle Little League. So we're just, this is sort of what we do. So really happy to be here. Nice. Um, okay, next can we hear from Matt. Hi, I'm Matt Butts. I am one of the principals and a civil engineer at McKenzie. Uh, I apologize, I'm only here temporarily as I think I'm gonna be uh, uh, not a fan or not, you guys won't be a fan of me because right now I'm at the, uh, Westland's home uh, high school softball field as I'm an assistant coach at Westland High School softball. And today our move, our game yesterday got moved to today. And so we're about to coach, uh, I'm about to coach a junior varsity and a varsity game against Lake Oswego High School. And I could turn my camera. You see they're outside that door right now. Uh, so I do apologize. I'll have to jump out of here in about 20 minutes, but uh, you'll have me until then. My, uh, then uh, my, my favorite sport was baseball until I had two daughters and now it's softball. Nice. <laughs> Um, okay, next, can we hear from Megan? Hi, I'm Megan Big John. I am Lake Oswego's uh, park manager, and my favorite sport is softball. Great. Um, next, could we please hear from Richard? Yes, Richard Herman. I am on the board of directors for the Friends of Lusher Farm, and I think uh, my favorite sports are cycling and putonk, which is like the French uh, version of bocce ball. Oh, interesting. I haven't heard of that one. I love learning something new. Um, okay, next, can we please hear from um, Tom? Yeah, hi, uh, Tom Kelly. I'm uh, president of the Lake Oswego Girls Softball Little League. Um, and uh, really nice to meet everyone and see everyone's faces. Um, and yeah, I definitely can echo what a lot of people said. Uh, favorite sport certainly is baseball, but I've got two daughters and we are absolutely a softball family. I also have a daughter in LOSC. So soccer is a big passion of ours. And when I get some time, which is very rare, I do like to enjoy golf. So thank you. Nice. Um, next, can we hear from Tony? Hi, everybody. I'm Tony Garcia. I'm the athletic field crew leader for City Lake Oswego. Um, and my boys play football. So my favorite sport is football. Great. Uh, I really want to be where your background is right now. Actually, that's beautiful. <laughs> um, next we hear from Zach. Hi, my name is Zach and I'm a project coordinator with Lois Cohen Associates and we're helping out with community engagement for this project. Uh, my favorite sport would have to be baseball. Nice. Um, and then Drew. Um, yeah, my name's Drew Herrian. Um, I'm representing Lake Oswego Little League. And uh, my favorite sports are baseball, softball, and snow skiing. 
Very cool. Um, and then how about Robert? Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is uh, Robert Heap. Uh, I'm a board member on the Palisades Neighborhood Association for Area 11, which uh, is uh, adjoining to a stake. Uh, my favorite sports is uh, IndyCar racing, but uh, I uh, like and enjoy uh, my kids' sports, which my son plays uh, basketball and my daughter plays softball. So those are favorite sports. Too. Very cool. Um, and then let's see, Stephen, are you are you back with us? No, I think uh, right now it sounds like Stephen um, Tuttle, who's uh, going to be one of our presenters and representing uh, McKinsey, our design team, is having some technical difficulties. So um, I just want to know that he'll, you know, he'll be back with us, and if not, we'll we'll pick his presentation um, up and still be able to to give you the information. But um, hopefully, we'll see Stephen again. Um, is there anybody I missed, or or any anything before we get started on our our meeting agreements that anyone wants to say? Okay, great. Um, Zach, if you wouldn't bring, wouldn't mind bringing our slideshow back up, um, we'll start our meeting um, by talking a little bit about our meeting agreements. Um, and then if you, if you all don't mind um, just muting uh, during this portion, that'll just help with, with some background sound. Um, so the document that I'll be using for this portion is your um, charter. So if you have that um, in front of you, that'll help. Um, so our meeting guidelines for today are um, first for the pack, if you can arrive on time and be prepared, that'll really help us get started. Um, our second is to um, share the air. We're especially in a Zoom uh, call, only going to be able to hear from one person at a time. Um, so if you do have a contribution, if you can raise your hand either you know physically or with the buttons, that'll help me know um, that you wish to speak. Um, our third point is to express your own views or those of your constituents um, and not try and speak for others that aren't at the table so we can really record your point of view. Um, next is to listen carefully and keep an open mind. Um, we're hoping that this body will represent diverse perspectives and so we want to make sure that, that um, all different perspectives are, are respected in this space. Um, which leads me to the next one, which is to respect the views and opinions of others and refrain from any personal attacks within or outside of these meetings. We wanna keep it really respectful and really elevate the conversation to make sure that we're disagreeing about ideas. Um, the next is to avoid side conversation. Um, if you have a contribution or you need to check in with someone, if we could just do that outside the meeting time. Um, next will be to focus your questions and comments on the subject at hand so that we can stick to the agenda. We, we do have agendas for all of our meetings already prepared, so we want to make sure that we're discussing stuff that will be really be relevant for this stage in the process. And if you have comments or ideas, we can put that in the parking lot or we can put it in a section to make sure that we bring it back up. But we also want to make sure that we're keeping to the subject matter today. Um, next, when discussing the past, link the past to the current discussion constructively. So we just want to make sure that we're working from a place of experience, but not bringing up issues that are um, either not really part of this discussion or have happened already in the past. Next is seek to find a common ground with each other and consider the needs and concerns of the local community and the larger region. And now that one is just speaking to, you know, the point that we're really having to think about a park for all of Lake Oswego and our region. And so think about how your comments might be um, really for all people. Um, the next is to turn off or put away your cell phone or put it on silent mode so that we can make sure we're really focused in this meeting on the topics at hand. Um, and then last, if you have any inquiries from the media, it would be really helpful if you can notify project staff, in this case, Jenny Anderson, and refer any re official statements or viewpoints for, of the city, make sure that she is your contact point. Um, so committee members are not um, speaking to the media on behalf of the committee or the city, only um, uh, sharing their own perspectives. Okay, and then Zach, can you go to the next slide? Unless we have any, any questions or any additions to those, those meetings? I'm going to change my layout real quick so I can see you all. All right. And so um, in our charter, it really lays out the role of the PAC. And this will be really important because we want to make sure that um, we're using your time really wisely. And I think I speak on behalf of the entire team and saying how grateful everyone is that you're you're able to be with us and that you're giving us your time. And so we want to make sure that that we're using it to a really tailored purpose. Um, 
Jenny's going to provide you a little bit of the project background, so I won't get into that portion of the charter, but I just want to highlight, a, bring a few things to the surface. The first is um, really thinking about our schedule. And again, um, we will hear a little bit more about the overall project schedule, but just for you all to, to make sure that you can attend those meetings. Um, if you can't attend the meetings, um, we don't need a quorum to to meet, but we do really want to make sure that we're representing, you know, the full spectrum of voices in this uh, in this board. So if you can make those meetings, it's, it's really vital that that we have your input. Um, really, your role as a committee um, is not to make recommendations, but to be an ambassador for this project. And, and we think of that in two ways. You're both um, bringing, you're elevating and articulating the concerns of the communities that you're in conversation with. So you're bringing issues forward. You're letting the team know about what it is that you're hearing in the field. But you're also, you know, serving as an ambassador for the project through your role in the committee by offering, um, you know, a, a version of what's happening uh, here. You're also providing information to the communities that you're talking with. Um, the other thing that we really need you to be doing in this space is to be reviewing community input as we receive it, making sure that what we're hearing and what we're asking is really reflecting what you're hearing and what you want to be asking to the community as well. Um, so those are going to be really the, the two vital parts of your, um, your work here. Um, and then the last one, of course, will be for you to provide impact on, or to provide feedback on the different design options. Again, as a body, you don't have to make a singular recommendation, but of course we wanna hear from each of you because you have so much expertise about your, um, your opinions and your um, desires in this design process. Okay, does anyone have any questions about the, the role and the purpose um, of the PAC and what we're doing here today? Okay, great. And if if this comes back up, I'm, we can go back to the charter. It just helps us, you know, kind of be in agreement and in alignment with what it is we're doing today. Um, okay, so if that all makes sense, why don't we move to our next section? Um, Zach, if you wouldn't mind um, giving us the next slide. Okay, so it looks like Stephen, you you were um, able to join us. Are you speaking first, or is this Jenny? It's me. Oh, great. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Jenny and she's going to give us some some project background um, and kind of walk us through the, the previous work. Great. great. OK, so Receipt uh, Park is a nearly 10 acre park in um, Lake Oswego that was acquired by the city in 1996. Um, and through the years, there's been in several master plans and studies for this site, but all uh, slated for active recreation. Sorry, my office is at the golf course and it's a little noisy in the background. So I hope everyone can hear me. Um, so in the Lusher area master plan, um, which was on the 97 and again in 2013, I just put a little map here showing that it was um, slated for active recreation at um, both those times. Is that, can we move to the next slide? So, um, some different studies have been done showing that there is a need. So the parks plan 2025 um, showed that we didn't have enough uh, sports fields. Um, and it was one of the challenges that the city was facing. And then there was athletic field requirement studies done in 2011. And then and again in 2019, which was um, in response to the bond prioritization that showed people wanted athletic fields. So the funding is gonna be coming from um, the 2019 Parks Bond um, that Lake Oswego residents passed. And uh, in June, 2019, after it was passed, uh, a consultant did a Parks Bond prioritization. So they had several different workshops and surveys and ways and all across the board, athletic fields was a high priority for um, the spending, uh, for, for using some of the money of the bond, Parks Bond. Um, and so then, for the past three years, council goals, um, the council has had on their goals and initiatives um, that moving this receipt project forward. Jen, can you nod if you can hear me okay? All right, good, I'm in business. Just had to switch computers for a second there. Um, uh, I'm Steven, the uh, uh, landscape architect project manager at McKenzie for this project. I, I missed my intro. Maybe Jen, you said that. So thank you. Looks like it says my name is Will. That's 
that's my son's name. So all that, <laughs> all that for a great intro. Um, I assume, you know, you guys are probably uh, somewhat familiar where the site is, but um, to give you some context, uh, you see Receipt Park in the middle here, um, Lake Ridge to the north, the golf course to the north, um, and then just east of us, Lusher Farm. Hazalia Field is just kind of uh, northeast uh, of this site, and then Stevens Meadows uh, Natural Areas is to the south, and then the neighborhood to the, the west there. So for context, that's kind of where we are in space, right off of Stafford and Atherton. If you go to the next slide, we'll zoom in just, just a touch here. So looking at the Rasik property, um, uh, this is kind of kind of what it looks like. Um, I guess this is a year or two old. There's now a soil stockpile kind of kind of on the northern end of the site there. But um, there's basically just, you know, it's just been un tended uh, land for quite a few years. There's a sort of a high point in the middle and it sheds east and west, the drainage that is. Um, all the trees there on the left, um, that's a sensitive lands overlay. Um, and there are some recently delineated wetlands that um, kind of hang off of the Atherton tributary there. And the Atherton tributary goes south and ties into the Tualatin River to the south of this. Um, so that's the property. We're bounded on the on the sides there by Atherton and Stafford, the church to the to the north. Um, that's generally it. So you can kind of see in general where this might take us. The sensitive lands will be an important constraint to consider on the west side. And you can kind of imagine how a field might kind of go um, square in the middle there. Um, there are scattered trees throughout the site. Um, and um, there's also a multi-use trail along Stafford on the east side that is paralleled by the, the trail on the east side of Stafford next to Lusher Farm there where, where you can see that trail as well. So um, those are some of the considerations just to get you familiar with the site. And then if you look at the ne next slide, if you haven't been out to the site, um, it looks something like this uh, on the ground. Um, you know, just just a grassy field and a, just a scattered variety of, of trees on the site. This is looking uh, south, I believe. And then, um, so that's just a quick intro to the site. Um, I want to just sort of emphasize, you know, to date, uh, we haven't done any design work uh, yet on this project. We're just, you guys are at the beginning uh, uh side of this um and just getting you oriented to the site um and we've just been getting ramped up uh to have this conversation to get public feedback and uh we'll be moving into some different ideas in the next month or so so let's look at the schedule here um real quick just to give you guys a high level look at where this is going and what this process looks like um uh, you can see across the top there, we've got the months. Uh, we're in towards the end of April, so we've been in the project for about two months. We being McKenzie and uh, LCA and the city uh, parks department here. Um, and really, that's just all this upstart work. Um, we haven't really put pen to paper at all on this project yet. But if you fast forward um, to the end of this graph, you can see the uh, expected project delivery is the end of 2022. So it's a long process. Um, it's going to take some time. Um, don't sweat it. There's not a, a year and a half commitment from the PAC to you know be engaged every other week for <laughs> six you know 18 months. Um, there will be some some uh, you know month to month meetings here at the start just to to keep the conversation going but in broad brush strokes you can see task one schematic design that's the first four months here where we're gonna um, get some ideas down on paper and take them to you guys to the public to get some some feedback to steer us in the right direction um, and then as we go to task two we will start to develop those ideas uh, a little bit more refined at that point, you can see that orange bar in the middle of the screen. That's the land use uh, review process, and that's a, a considerable chunk of time. That's um, the city's process to um, review the, the plans and make sure it's meeting all the zoning criteria um, and design standards along the way. Um, and then meanwhile, we'll be advancing the drawings even further in uh, task three construction documents there. 
So once all that's done, you can see at the end of February, we're um, ideally on the schedule, we'll have a, a, a set of drawings that's ready to take to permit and then to bidding. And then right, right around this time next year um, is when we'd love to break ground. And you can imagine that dry weather uh, is really where you wanna be for construction. So we're trying to target uh, next summer for moving dirt and uh, that makes construction a lot, a lot easier. So um, that's the high level look. Um, if you follow those, those horizontal bars, the blue dots uh, on here are, are not all PAC meetings. A couple of them are, um, but just in general, um, you, you can take away from that, that uh, Lake Oswego Parks and Rec and the design team here are meeting consistently throughout um, this whole project to uh, get it steered in the right direction. So that's the high level look at um, at the schedule. And uh, you know, there's there's one important takeaway from this, or maybe two. It takes time. There's a process um, involved, and uh, look forward to the end of 2022 um, to the anticipated opening for the park. Great. Thank you to Stephen and to Jenny. We're like flying through this agenda. I love it. Um, I want now for us to have a chance for you to ask some questions of the project team, um, you know, ask some questions of, about where we're going with the project, about the background, anything that, that sort of came to mind during those presentations. That's a good question. Um, when does and how does the design process kick off and what are the inputs that you guys are considering for those? Um, I can I can start to speak to that, but I might punt to our next section a little bit where we've done a survey um, that um, Jen, I think you're going to take us through uh, here in a little bit. So. Um, but the short answer is now that we've we've sort of got the project up and running, we've we're we're having this meeting here with you um, to hear from you guys. Um, you guys, uh, no doubt, have seen or heard that there was a, a online survey that went out, and um, so now we've we've got the, the the basis for the information we need to really start start going. So um, the month of May here, we're going to start to take that information and and turn it into. Um, some illustrations and, and test fit layouts to see see how to um, merge the survey with with the layout on the site. So, that's a great question. And if uh, the next section we'll be talking about the public input process, um, and we'll review the the website and our first survey. So that that may also help answer some questions. Let's see, um, Richard, do you do you have a comment to you? Yeah, just a quick question. So uh, is this currently in the city uh, limits or is this contingent upon the urban growth boundary being expanded? Uh, we're in the urban growth boundary, but we're not within the urban services boundary. So we'll be um, applying to get into the urban services boundary. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Uh, the site has kind of uh, moved back and forth a little bit with uh, jurisdictional lines over the last two decades. So, uh, good question. Okay. Do we have any other uh, questions about the background or sort of the where we are in in the schedule? Okay, if not, um, I think maybe it would be appropriate since we're we're early in the agenda to to move on to our next section and then we'll we have some questions to ask you about the next public input process. And so maybe we can sort of generate the discussion more at that end if that works. Um, so again, this will just be a little adjustment to the schedule. We're going to move forward and then we'll do a break after that portion if that works for you all. Okay, and then I'm going to have Zach, if you don't mind um, walking us through the website, that'll kind of give you another, you know, this is our public facing version of what the project looks like. 
Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, so this website has been live for a few weeks now. Um, and it's just a great central hub for the public when they want to learn more about the project. Um, we just have some basic background information, uh, some introductory videos about the project, a video tour of the site, and then some information about the public outreach and ways people can get involved. Um, we have sort of a simplified version of that project timeline that just explains uh, when things are going to be happening and sort of what each of those um, phases entails. Um, and then this is the Get Involved tab. So this is where we had the online survey linked down here when it was available. Um, once we have the survey results report ready, it'll be posted here. Future online open houses, neighborhood meetings. This is just really the hub for all of the um, digital engagement. Um, and most of the engagement will be digital because of the pandemic. Um, and then we have a Documents tab. Right now, it's just background information. Um, the documents that Jenny talked about earlier. As we add uh, new documents for this project, they will be down here for people to view as well. And then we also have contact information for people to reach out and a comment form if people just want to submit a comment um, through the website. So that's seekpark.com. Make sure to share it um, with your, your groups and friends um, and let them know that this is really the central place where they can get information about the project. Great, thank you, Zach. Um, do we, in looking at the website, I don't know how many of you have had a chance to look at it before this meeting, but did any questions come up or any comments or thoughts about that as a, a way to get information to folks? I mean, maybe both as a tool and secondly, the specific website that we've designed, you know, any, any interface questions you had or comments? Yeah, looks like I see um, Scott's hand. Hey, Zach. Um... I was gonna I was gonna message you and I can do that. Like, there's a couple things I was bouncing through the website I wanted to uh based on like the stay connected uh link seems to not work. And if you bounce into view committee members, it looks like the uh module dead ends you as far as the tabs and they're active. So if you'd like, I can type that for you. Yeah, that'd be great. And I'll work on that tomorrow. All right. Thank you. All right, moving on. Sorry. No, thank you. Yeah, no, Scott, that's like exactly the kind of information that's really, really helpful for us to, to hear. So thank you. Okay, anyone else just perusing this? Is it, do you like it, not like it? Does it work? Okay, looks like Katie. I just had a question more like over all comms. Is there going to be any updates like Twitter or Facebook or Instagram beyond the website where people can stay updated on the project? like the larger community, or is it really just the website at this moment? Well, we put out um, through the parks and recreation and the city has different, you know, different websites and Facebook and next door and things like that. So the website and the survey was um, advertised at that point. Um, and so as we go along through the process, we'll continually advertise as things go along. Also, right now, up at the sport, other sports fields and at Receipt Park, there's signs with the website. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, is it called a QR code where you can? Yeah, okay, a QR code as well. So the youth organizations that are um, using fields in Lake Oswego, where the signs are, you could actually um, encourage your your um, other parents and players that are interested um, to actually click on that QR code and then save that as a favorite and, and they can go directly to the website. But um, beyond the website, like Jenny was saying, um, we have an integrated communications plan um, with the rest of the city. So through our, our Twitter account, um, also our Instagram account, um, Facebook and Nextdoor, uh, we push information um, on a cyclical basis. So folks, if they're subscribed to any of those, will get the information will be coming through on the on the city feed. Okay, do we have any other thoughts about the the website itself as a tool or this particular design? Okay, if not now, um, again, I encourage you 
peruse the website, give us some feedback if there's anything that's unclear, or you think that there should be additional information or you know, whatever kind of comments you have, those are really, really helpful. Um, well, as Zach mentioned, the, one of the first things we did with this website is to host an online open house. And that looks, especially at this phase, a little different than it's gonna look in subsequent open houses. So we're, we're really um, interested in your input as we move into the, our next open house, which will be more information you know, about this particular site. At the first stage, we're really just asking general information about how, what kinds of facilities people like, what kind of amenities they want. And so that was our, the gist of our, our first survey. And so, um, Zach, if you wouldn't mind walking us through um, our first survey results, um, and then maybe uh, touching a little bit on the outreach approach, you know, where we put the signs and how we tried to get uh, folks to take the survey. Uh, yep, before I do that, I see that Katie, you have your hand up, is that? All right, I just didn't take it down. Okay, okay. no problem. Okay. Uh, so the survey was open from April 16th to April 25th. Um, and we got a pretty good response rate. We got 629 uh, responses to the survey. We're currently creating a full survey report that's gonna be available to the public so that they can view um, what their fellow community members had to say. Um, right now though, I'm just gonna run through some of the, more of the raw data and some of the charts. Um, so the first question we asked um, was in thinking of other Lake Oswego parks with athletic fields, which of the following characteristics are most importantly to you, or most important to you, sorry. I um, mean, we asked people to rank these uh, one to seven. Natural areas came out on top, followed by playgrounds, seating, shade, walking paths, shelter, and then further down we had concession stands. Um, we asked folks what their favorite sports field was and why. Um, there were 431 people that filled out this text box, and these are the top five responses that we got. Um, the first was Hazalia Field. That was mentioned 119 times. Um, and some of the reasons, the main reasons that were mentioned were the turf, fields, uh, lacrosse, the large size of the park and quality of the field, easy access to dog park, bathrooms, views, walking paths, proximity to schools, parking, um, which some people listed as a positive and some people listed as a negative, access, uh, safety, and good lighting. Next, we had Waluga Park East, which got 102 mentions. Um, people liked that there was room for multiple activities, the turf, location, and then amenities like bathrooms, playgrounds, natural areas, bike trails, um, the shade, year-round access, baseball field, and concessions. Westlake Park got 23 mentions. Uh, people liked the trails, the number of fields, location, playground, the flexibility of uses, the shelters, and the parking. George Rogers got 21 mentions. People really liked uh, that that one had amenities for the whole family, sort of a balance of activities, and good for younger kids, as well as the turf situation. Um, and then sort of the next grouping below that, uh, a lot of, or eight people mentioned various uh, Tualatin Hills Parks and Recreation District parks. And what they liked about those were the athletic features, natural landscaping, trails, and then just the variety that they offered. So that was our first open-ended question. Um, we asked people how would they be most likely to use the park? They could select as many as uh, they wanted to. So there was a number of organized sports players um, and athletes, um, as well as organized sports spectators, which is the second one here. Um, individual outdoor exercise also ranked pretty high uh, with 47% of respondents saying that they would do that at the park, 37% playing on the playground, um, and then 75% utilizing uh, any of the trails that are on site. Um, we asked people, what amenities are the most important to you um, when you're watching a sporting event at a park like this? Uh, far and away, restrooms was the most popular option. 86% of people felt that that was important. 
Seating was also important with 69%, um, shelter at 47%, and then lower down at 12%, we had internet access, 10% for food, and then 8% for other. Um, most of the others were related to the configuration of the parking lot or having shaded areas. We asked people if they ever brought their pets to a sporting event, just so we could see what amenities um, we might include for pet owners. Um, about 22% said they sometimes bring their pets, 17% rarely, 43% never, 4% um, always bring their pets, and 10% most of the time they'll bring their pets. We wanted to get an idea about um, how big the group sizes are that are attending sporting events. Um, so 54% said they usually just attend with one to two people, 37% said three to five, and then large groups of more than five people was 3%. We asked people what their preference was for the um, primary use of the park. Soccer was the most popular option um, with 65% of respondents. Baseball was second with 35, followed by softball at 22%, lacrosse at 20%, and then football at 15. Um, we asked people if there was additional space available on the site, which activity would be the most meaningful for you? Um, we asked people only pick one on this since there's limited space to work with in the park. Um, the top choice out of those with 19% was basketball, followed by tennis at 17%, pickleball at 14%, workout stations at 13%, um, skateboarding at 12%, parkour at 5%, and rollerblading at 4%, um, and then other was at 9%, and there was a wide variety of um, sports within that. Um, this one, we just asked if people are typically dropping off their athletes um, or staying for the game. 35% say that they uh, drop off, they often drop off players, um, and then 29% sometimes, so that will just impact um, pick up and drop off areas. Um, this was our second open-ended question. We asked specifically if people were a coach or a player what features would be most desirable to make this park successful. Um, 162 people filled out this form. Um, number one with 65 mentions was parking. Um, they wanted it away from the field for safety, plenty of space and drop off zones. 62 people mentioned increased access. So, you know, variety of types of players, types of sports and time of day where athletic events can be held. 58 um, mentioned various issues relating to turf. 46 said having multiple fields. 27% said having shade, shelter were important. 14% mentioned bathrooms. Uh, 13 people mentioned having water fountains. 11 mentioned lights. And then eight mentioned skate parks. Six mentioned batting cages. Five for playground. Four each for storage and fencing. Three for a natural look, which we'll talk about a little bit more later. Um, and two for concessions. Um, we asked people when they attend an athletic event at a park like this, how do they typically arrive there? Um, the vast majority either drove alone or carpooled. Um, the, there were a few walkers, a couple bikers, um, and then the people that said other said that normally they would carpool during the pandemic, they're driving alone, but after the pandemic, they'll get back to carpooling. Um, we asked for thoughts on four possible design characters for the park. So if you saw the survey, you saw that we had four image boards of just examples about design concepts. They weren't features for the park, but just a general idea about how they want the park to look. And by far, the most popular choice was naturalistic. So that was 59% wanting that, followed by 16% for agricultural, 15% for contemporary, and 10% for sculptural slash whimsical. And just as a reminder, this was the image board that was there for naturalistic. So this was sort of what people were most interested in um, when we showed them the different options. It's a lot of natural elements. 
so that's the end of the survey. I'll turn it back to Jen so we can discuss that. Yeah, and I think on the next slide, we have just a couple of directed questions. Um, one, we want to um, talk a little bit about how we can let, let more people know how we can increase their participation for the next survey. Um, and then if you all know if there's a direct outreach that we should be doing, if you could, you know, let us know who we should be reaching out directly. Um, we also want to know just your feedback on the questions that you saw on the first survey, if, if any of them you think that needs some improvement or you have any questions about the results from the survey. Awesome. Thanks, Zach. So we can sort of tackle those in, in any order. Um, I guess maybe the first question, did you see the, the survey? Some nods? Yeah, it looks like, Katie, you have a hand up. Um, I was just going to ask if, um, just based on the questions, I thought they were really, uh, really thoughtful and good. I was curious about just, um, like, inclusive play or, like, disabilities or, you know, like getting to understanding what the community needs are beyond like traditional playgrounds or traditional play, I think would be helpful. I think it would be helpful. Yeah, great, great feedback, Katie. That's definitely within our sights to approach it that way. And we would, we would use that as our baseline to just launch from that point. Good point. Okay, great. And then did I see another hand up? Okay, yeah. Um, Tom? Yep. Hi, thank you. Um, just more out of kind of curiosity, just in terms of framing the survey, um, or future surveys, I suppose. Um, I, I guess a couple of things that stood out to me as it was just more interesting than, and, than anything was, especially the question around how would you most likely use the park? And of use use of the trail features uh, was was kind of in the lead, and you know just based on kind of the overview of what's been shared, you know is and and just just kind of looking at the footprint that's going to be available. And I know we're not even close to the design phase, but is the the objective still very much primary objective still very much is athletic fields versus a trail system or something like that? I guess I just I'm just kind of curious. You know, you know, based on that response, just that you know, expectations are being set. You know, for the future, if it's not already clear that it it may not, you know, have the real estate for a trail system such as Lucia or something like that. I'm sorry, I lost my connection. But Stephen, did you want to address that again? Um... Yeah, I could chime in or Jenny, you can follow up if you want to. But yeah, um, great point. Um, the primary objective will remain. It's an athletic field park um, based on the council goals and some of the outlying information we gave at the beginning. Some of those questions are, you know, when you've when you've got uh, an athletic field use that's going to take up that much space, then it's about how to characterize the rest of the site in some ways so um, um part of part of the 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 direction of the survey is is not quite a wish list but just help us understand you know if if we've got space um what you know what would be the most appropriate way to use it and that's how we would view the trails um portion of it yep. sure, sure. And, and then just a, a second um, question is really more just an observation at looking at kind of the desired features if you're a coach or a player. Um, I was actually kind of surprised to see lights as being as low uh, as, as it was. I honestly, I can't remember how the question was framed, um, but it kind of prompted a thought and again, well down the road with design, but any neighborhood uh, considerations, concerns with lights um, on a, a facility like this you know, very close, obviously, you know, residents, uh, residential homes, that sort of thing. Personally, as a coach, just knowing the space limitations we deal with, having lights is extremely important. But um, just curious, you know, at what point that is kind of a consideration that is being put into place. I'll go ahead and jump in um, on this one. So. Um, it, it's always a consideration whenever we have that. Um, we're talking about 
heights, especially if it's adjacent to a neighborhood like this one is. Um, part of our approach as we look at that and as the pack moves forward into design and, and lights either become or are not a, a priority, um, I, I would guess that they're going to be a priority because, you know, as as the Parks Department knows, we do, um, along with the school district, you know, we there there's a huge demand on these fields. So the idea of, of looking at the technologies that are available um, that actually have the minimum impact on, on um, recently within the last couple of years completed the project down at uh, George Rogers um, with lights and we found that um, they are leap ahead of um, even the Hazelia lights um, as far as technology for keeping the light where we need it on the fields. Um, the other thing looking at the site, and, and we've had some conversations with, with Stephen and his team preliminarily, um, the site itself too, um, depending on how the grading plan works out, um, there is that natural buffer that we cannot get into, which is along Pecan Creek, the the which actually has some mature trees, which um, will actually play to our advantage as we're looking into that. Um, but I anticipate that at some point as we engage the neighborhood, and I think Robert's here from, from the immediate neighborhood, um, and then also uh, Richard from, from the Friends of Lusher, is that um, we'll have the ability to actually do um, some simulation of what a lighting system might look like on that property and what the impacts may be in the neighborhood um, using, you know, the George Rogers um, technology as our basis, but then also superimposing that on the site, um, you know, that scaled properly and so that we can we can take a look at that. But we're very conscious of that. And that's, um, you know, part of part of this process and part of our um, our land use um, process will be engaging with the neighborhood um, and um, also meeting the requirements of uh, the design review commission. So, thank you. That's very helpful. Development review. Great. It looks like I see hands up from Drew and then uh, Robert. Hi. Uh, yeah, this is Drew, um, Lake Oswego Little League. So I noticed on the survey that um, they kind of had baseball and softball separated, but I really think you should kind of consider those together since, um, you know, any any field for could be used for both sports. So um, and, you know, in the design and everything, we should think about having the ability to change the base path distances and stuff for various configurations for both baseball and softball. Yeah, that's a really good point. Thank you. Um, Robert, did you have a question or a comment to you? Oh, yeah, actually both. Um, one comment to uh, Tom's question earlier was, yeah, I am from the Policy Aids Neighborhood Association, and of course, lighting is going to be one of the top concerns that the neighbor has, neighborhood has. So, you know, I think the neighborhood looks, uh, you know, openly through working with the uh, the uh, advisory committee and the parks uh, team uh, to look at um, what the possibilities are. So definitely a concern. Uh, and then my uh, second question was, um, I, I like the questions related to, you know, how do you uh, how do you get to the park? Uh, what type of methods do you use? But I thought one thing that may be interesting to uh, get input on is from a sustainability perspective, you know, things like charger support. I didn't see any of that, um, but that may be something that would be interesting to get input from the community on. It's just sustainability and also like, you know, electric cars, that type of support. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, it looks like next I see Scott and then um, Richard. Hey, thanks. Um, back to the point, I think, Tom, did you make, did you ask the question about uh, is this, is the concept or is the kind of the intended use really framed around uh, ball fields and, and not, uh, is that you, Tom? And so, uh, yes. <laughs> I, I agree with you on the history talks. I'm so glad you you you, you mentioned that because uh, uh, those are those are those are definitely prior with these with these discussions. And uh, but we we had we had talked and when we were working on the priorities, um, well, gosh, for years, right? Right. Um, Rasik was really earmarked and um, had it, it was all along the way it was intended to be 
uh, its highest priority was as ball field. So I have not seen a whole lot of other discussions of anything else. Uh, because of the SLA, the way it was delineated, we've kind of got a nice balance here. And the uh, proximity to the high school and the buffer with uh, with Lusher was just fantastic. And then we fought so long and begged for money for so long for uh, Waluga Park. And um, the success story there, the overwhelming success there was really the proof and concept. And so I've not heard anything else other than um, really ball fields at this location. And and I think again to another point, um, if we can if we can make that make that field so it's multi use for youth sports, um, that's fantastic. And and that's the highest and best use. And of course lights, uh, Robert, I I, I hear you. Um, I'm also co chair at Forest Highlands Neighborhood Association. We have Lake Oswego High School in our in our inside of our uh, inside of our boundary. And um, the new technology with these directed LEDs are fantastic. They're low voltage, um, but they also uh, really are almost dark sky while they're on, and um, and and they're they're fantastic. I wish we were able, could afford to, to retrofit everywhere, but uh, um, I think the natural buffer. I, I'd, I'd hate to see a field without it. It just uh, again it goes back to utilization rate. Makes no sense. Great, thank you, Scott. Um, Richard, did you have a, a comment to you or a question? Yes, uh, I didn't know where to find the button here to raise my hands. So. <laughs> um, you asked the question about how do we reach out to the larger community, and uh, you probably have already done this, but the you have a very strong network of friends groups around the city, and also a strong list of volunteers. I don't know if that's something you track and, and reach out to, but uh, it seems to me the friends groups and people who volunteer actively engaged in local neighborhoods would be a good target. Yeah, that's great. That's a great idea to reach out directly to them. That's exactly kind of the information that we're looking for. Thank you. Um, Drew, do you have your hand up? Do you do you want to make an additional comment or is that from um, from earlier? That was from earlier. Okay, so any any other either comments to folks that we should reach out to or the method through which we reach out to folks? I think um, Jenny mentioned we did um, signs and blasts online, um, but if you all have uh, other ways that your players or the folks in your community get information, that's really helpful for us to, to know too. Are there any other outreach kind of methods that you've seen be successful or that you think we should employ? Okay, well, if it seems like that method, um, we did get a pretty robust response. Um, so I think that that's a good indicator. And we really, though, for the next um, open house, we wanna we wanna increase that even more because that'll be the point at which people can really look at some different options. Um, if, when you think, I know that we, there's a lot of question and a lot of information in front of you, but if you look back through the questions, um, are there any questions that we didn't ask? Um, I, Katie, to your point, the accessibility question is a great one. Um, are there other kind of questions that we didn't ask or um, alternately, did we ask a question in a way you think we should reword and ask again to, for a greater impact? And I'll just speak to one one lessons learned for us is uh, the question open ended question that we asked about your favorite sports field. Um, we got a lot of responses about people's favorite sport, um, and so you know that is less relevant data for for us as their favorite sports field. So we learned um, that we should be referring to it as an athletic field to kind of cue people that we're talking about the field and not not the actual sport. But I know as you look through the questions, if there's anything else like that that either cued you or you found confusing or or you think we should ask again. I'm um, going back to, to Tom's comment. I think it's really important that if we are doing survey and we're um, talking about things that aren't directly related to the athletic field, that we make sure that the, the context of um, within a a park that has the, ma the major features athletic fields 
what would you like to see? Because I, I think in, in Tom's comments, what, what it kind of led me, just him talking about it, was that maybe that wasn't as clear as it could have been um, and upfront. And I think that we need to, you know, start all of our, our um, whatever questioning we're doing with kind of the context of with, within the, the context of an athletic field, a park that is about the athletic field, what other things would you like to see or what type of characteristic would you like it to take? So. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good point. Yeah, we wanna make sure that that's definitely the, always the message and we're not trying to ask people, you know, about building something that's outside the scope of this project for sure. Uh, let's take Scott. Yeah, um, I, I'm just going to piggyback that with with Ivan is that uh, when with the rebuilding of the Waluga Middle School, Lake Ridge Junior High, and the the impact that had on the fields that were available, um, this was there was a it was a pretty big pain point for the community, and we 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 received a lot of input over time, and we we were always pointing to Reseek as our as our pressure outlet, so. Um, it wasn't really if it was what how, what how 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 should it look to in order to best best make up for that and we'll never make up for it entirely but uh, but we have that we have the spot and it was a staging area for a while um so absolutely and um as a as a pack just a house cleaning issue or a housekeeping issue um as I, I put it up there as a pack um virtually are do we have a common email so that when the if if we get some public comments and we can all work together and communicate on a common thread, um, do you have a common email for the PAC? We don't have one, no. Um, something I can look to. Right now we just have, you know, I can just send out a blast to everybody. Um, right. I, we could just kind of base it off of that. Um, I'll get back to you on that one. I'll set something up. Okay, so we don't have 37 different threads on the same subject. That's <laughs> fantastic. Okay, thanks. I have a quick question that's more around safety. And I don't know, um, I think with the field location where it is, people are gonna be going between Lucier to this field, to the high school. And I just don't know what responsibility, you know, we have if we're just focused on this facility to think about, you know, people, you know, hiking came up, like, I would drop off my kid and I would go walk Lucia and I would come back. So just thinking about, you know, between the fields too, um, and just making sure that like those pathways or those, you know, the connectivity for the community is there. I don't know if that's part of the scope, but just something to think about, because that's how people will use it as, you know, they're going to be connected, whether we plan for that or not. And um, it is, and as, um, because this is a considered a major development in our development code, um, one of the things that we will have to address is uh, connectivity um, as, as part of this project. So we will have to show uh, where those connections are. Um, we'll have to show that those connections are, you know, safe, well-marked, um, those types of things. So that will be something that we'll be looking at as we move forward um in this project for sure yeah Keith, that's a great comment because both the in terms of the connectivity and in terms of safety we i don't think that we've asked a specific question around that but that's that's an important important value okay any any other thoughts on the previous survey or things that you would want to see in, in this next survey? I'll add one other thing. I, we may want to ask more around concessions in terms of this, because it's something that people always say that they want, but no one ever, had, you know, they're never manned. So like the community support to like man a concession ends up not happening and then it takes up space that we may you know use for something else so unless there's a plan really for how a concession like is run and who's responsible for that and how it's part of the community i think it's it's something that people are always like yeah 
of course we do, <laughs> but maybe thinking about, I don't know how to get to more of that. Cause I think it's going to be something that continues to kind of hang around, but how we approach that is probably something to poke into a little bit. Yeah, that's a yeah. good point. I guess I'm thinking and thinking about this answer to the survey questions. Were there any, is there any information that strikes you as like, oh, I'm not, that that is, it doesn't fit with what my gut or what my knowledge of, of the community is, or did, any answers that surprised you? I liked the point of lighting not coming up more. Like that's a, that's a good example. Um, location of the playground is something that I, you know, like how, because um, everyone, especially having multiple kids, you know, you love having the ability to like have kids play on the playground while you watch uh, your other kid play. Um, but even like Beluga is great, but for younger kids, like it's closer to the road, you know, like I wouldn't, I don't let my kid go out there until the game's over. And, you know, so just thinking about those things where is it more central? centrally located to the fields or further from the fields, um, those types of things, but. Yeah, that's a really good point. Any other thoughts or maybe Stephen, I can put you um, a little bit on the spot if there are any questions that you have as, as you're sort of thinking about what this this next open house kind of the elements that you might want to include or any any questions that come up around that. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm glad to meet you all and this looks like a just a really great group to work with. I, I think some really great feedback right out of the gate here. Um, you know, I, I would I would really encourage you guys to, you know, have your ear to the ground with your, you know, particular stakeholder group and and, you know, share what you've learned in this meeting and and bring that information back to us. So we, you know, we can really understand the multiple perspectives, you know, to bring to this this project. Um, I'm curious, you know, a lot of you are. Um, uh, you know, you're representing your organization. Uh, I'm curious um, if if you were to do the survey, like what 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 are the highlights that um, stand out to you guys um, as you think about this project? Is it um, is it all about having the the right sort of turf uh, uh, field? You know, is that like high priority? Or um, Katie, you mentioned the proximity of of you know, just how it's laid out is really important to you. Um, uh, any any um, kind of color commentary on what, you know, you saw in the survey and, and how you guys would view that? Yeah, Scott. Are, are you going around the horn? Because I, it's funny because I, I'm torn between the, you know, wanting the, the fields and, and, and I, 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 I really think turf. I've been sold on turf over the years, um, but I, anything that a turf here would that has a high perk rate because it, we're obviously in a, you know, a, a watershed area, and, um, and I'd really, I really like to have. I'd, I'd love to see. I mean, it, there's we've got we've got the best of both worlds to leverage here. We've got this natural area next to next to a ball field. And if we can make both work sympathetically with one another really well, that would be fantastic. And it's also away from the road. So I want to get the kids over there, get them muddy, send them home, get the car dirty. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, anything that makes this look like a real active anthill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe it would be helpful if you all, again, don't mind being put on the spot, if we could just go around and then each person, just that real high level, you know, the information you've been provided right now, what are the opportunities or like, what are you excited about? And then what are you foresee as challenges or things that we want to make sure that we're paying attention to? Would everyone feel okay if we just go around person by person and, and have that kind of high level contribution?
Okay, well then why don't I start, um, I want to hear from staff too, but if it's okay if we start with um, some of our uh, folks on the, the committee, um, would it be okay, Katie, do you mind if I pick on you first to hear opportunities and challenges? Oh, and it looks like Drew, you've, you've raised your hand, he's your next victim. Uh, sure, I can start. I think the opportunities are, I feel very similar. Um, to Scott, where I think merging both worlds, um, you know, I think that's what the community has kind of highlighted. That's what I personally would would love to see. I think there's opportunity for um, creative space, um, space for kids to be inspired to play, um, uh, and then built very smart. So I think we have all the tools now to, you know, from lighting to the layout of the fields for multiple use. Um, I just think even using the play structure, inclusive play structure and, you know, how parent like community could like use that to work out or move their bodies, you know, just thinking about it as a place for like the whole, the whole community um, that's both um, a great place to play and a great place for kids to explore and, and families to explore. So that duality between nature and, um, and play, I think, is really the biggest opportunity. And just to throw something out there, like, um, just went through a big research project where over this last year, you know, 30% of kids are saying they're not going to return to sport um, coming out of the pandemic. And that, you know, Apple's telling us step counts are down 20%. So I think spaces like this are going to inspire much more movement and health in the community. So I think that's really the opportunity. Yeah, great points. Um, Drew, do you wanna go next? Yeah, I'd just like to comment, um, speaking from a baseball and, and also softball perspective, my, my daughter's played softball for you know, forever. And uh, I, I think it'd be great if we could pack as many fields as we can into the space available so that we have the opportunity to host tournaments. Um, right, right now, we don't really have a place in Lake Oswego where we could host a tournament where we have multiple fields uh, in a single facility. We were trying to plan a tournament earlier this year where we were going to hold some of the games at Lake Ridge and some of them at Lake Oswego and trying to figure out how we were going to piece it together. We ended up not being able to do it because of COVID. But um anyway if if we had a facility where there was at least two fields there then it would sure would be a lot easier to host a tournament in a single facility and for for baseball or softball so that'd be something that i would like to see great it looks like um tom you have your hand up as well yeah i'll just I'll pile on to the, um, the the baseball and softball. I, I echo everything that uh, Katie and Drew have said. Um, you know, I think truly a, a true multi-sport facility, you know, especially in our sports, um, it, it does get challenging because our you know, field configurations, distances, that sort of thing for pitching are so different. But, uh, you know, I, I shared in my survey responses, just the modularity, um, I think is important. Uh, absolutely agree that the ability to have, you know, two fields, um, for tournament play would be fantastic. Um, but then again, you know, with the real estate, you know, understanding what that means for the other sports too, because it, it, it truly does need to be a multi-sport field. Um, so really excited about those opportunities. I think challenges um, that I foresee, I mean, this is gonna be, when it's done, I, I can't wait. It'll be extremely coveted. Um, we know that there's very, you know, limited space as it is. I, I certainly think that this will ease some of that um, the demand, but it, it what I think we will still be seeing quite a bit of, um, you know, and, and how we balance the various organizations across both youth and adult recreation is going to still uh, be a challenge uh, even once this park is done. So hopefully uh, there'll be, you know, really good consideration to how and, and when that, uh, that field is available to each organization. Great, thank you. Um, Richard, do you mind going next? No, I'd be happy to. Uh, I just see, uh, well, first of all, the connectivity discussion we already had of making sure that people are able to move between the different uh, properties. 
And I just see a great opportunity here for the whole family because, uh, you know, already with the playing fields, there's opportunities for families to be there, not just for the sports, but with all the programs, parks and rec runs at the Lusher Farm, uh, you know, educational opportunities, the community gardens, the FRCC. I just see great opportunities for families to come and uh, maybe different members of the family have different interests and can all be uh, coming out to that location. So connectivity is, and, and eventually uh, with the bond measure, uh, some money set aside for improving parking at the Lesher Farm would, would also help in terms of integration of all these programs. Yeah, great points, thank you. Um, next, could we hear from Robert? Oh, sure. Yeah, I think uh, the opportunity that uh, from a neighborhood association that we've heard, uh, you know, the opportunity to keep it more of a natural area, some of the design considerations for a natural area uh, is um, something that uh, is really coveted by the community. Uh, and then the challenges, like we already talked about, it's definitely going to be lighting. I think that's going to be number one challenge. The, the impact that it has to the community. Yeah, great. Um, could we hear from Travis? Oh, I think you're still on mute, Travis. All right, is that better? Sorry. Um, yeah, I'll probably be um, um, the opposite um, of Robert as far as, I mean, we would probably like to see as much turf down as possible. I mean, I've been um, with the club now for almost 20, 21 years and knowing um, um, originally how many um, ball fields and stuff were, um, you know, talked about being out there and just the um, overall need for that. I mean, I think we, um, um, as an organization, would like to see um, as much of that um, turfed as possible um, so that we could, you know, us, baseball, um, um, lacrosse, uh, you know, all of the, all the sports would have as much access and as much space as possible. Great. And then um, could we hear from Tony? Um, I actually just had... I like what everybody's comments are. I understand everybody's concerns and comments. Um, but um, I was curious um, for everybody here that, you know, the baseball group, soccer, lacrosse, um, if they had, I'm thinking in long terms of the synthetic fields, and if they had like a playability preference, like if you compare East Waluga to Azalea, was there a preference on the way that turf plays at East Waluga? versus Azalea, or is there some field somewhere else that you've played that was like, this turf is really bad, and we sh shouldn't go there, you shouldn't go with that company or anything like that. So it might be a little more topic for the future, but that's kind of what was on my mind. Yeah, that's a great point. I, I would imagine that in, in the next survey, it'd be really good to pick up that exact issue of the, the turf, turf preferences. Um, and then, um, Brenda, do you, do you want to uh, make a comment or, uh, see things you see as opportunities or things you see as challenges? No, I'm really just listening at the moment. Sorry. Okay. That's all right. And then, um, Scott, I think you are last, um, participant. Uh, opportunities. I think we have an opportunity to this to use and still maintain it as open space. And uh, the challenge is the pushback that, I mean, I it's bittersweet having grown up in Lake Oswego and you know, we'd be gone for what seemed like forever. Parents had no idea where we were. Um, it, 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 it's just, it's bittersweet to see any kind of development um, at all. But I, I'm just really pleased to see this as open space still and uh, the way it would be. And Richard, uh, question for you, um, could you, Give us an update on where the board is with the lamp and is anything we're doing it out of alignment with where you might be headed with the up the current update on lamp and and uh, how that addresses receipt well it, i mean this is all consistent with uh lamp 
and um, what's been proposed. And we just completed an additional task group that the results haven't been published yet. But we've spent the um, last several months during the COVID time in looking at uh, how do we implement now a lot of the plans that were done uh, through that original master plan. And so uh, maybe uh, Megan or someone else can comment more on it, but uh, we've completed that work and uh, you know this is all consistent with what the uh, master plan, original plan was. Um, okay, well then let's, uh, is there anyone that I, oh yes, okay, I'm so sorry, Randall, yes. Yeah, I couldn't find the hand on the bottom of my uh, screen here. I I don't know what, I'll take a look at it later. Uh, but um, the, I think being from the Hamlet and the CPL, the folks are, uh, really uh, hopeful about adding sports facilities to the community because people uh, people from those areas uh, also have been coaches and uh, have kids in the schools and uh, uh, are really uh, anticipating some some greater access to sports. And uh, the other thing that they're concerned about is the um, uh, level of traffic on Stafford Road because we're all connected on Stafford and Rosemont. And um, so we know that there's a um, uh, plan for enlarging the traffic circle eventually at, at um, Rosemont and Stafford, and uh, we're we're wondering how that's going to be integrated, or does it does it happen way after this project, or does it happen simultaneously, or how, how is all that going to be timed and sequenced, and uh, how is the a uh, new plan for the athletic facility going to uh, accommodate that that uh, uh, different traffic traffic circle or different stoplight or whatever it's going to be um, uh, in its in its uh, inception. So that's that's sort of. Um, those are the kinds of concerns. Also, uh, of course, there are people are concerned about uh, in the Hamlet about uh, sound and pedestrian traffic and all of the things that we've uh, discussed today. So that's that's uh, my comment and and also is it's a is it possible to to somehow clarify those things as the project goes forward for the community so people can understand what's happening and uh, I think that's I think that's about uh, uh, where the where the folks from the Hamlet are you know are are at at this at this point. Yeah, that's really helpful, Randall. I don't know if staff want to um, address those points or if we just want to sort of save our comments to make sure that we're addressing them in our next uh, open house. Stephen, did you have a thought on that? Yeah, well, I thought maybe I'd take a quick run at, at a response there, and, and Jenny or Evan can follow up if, if they'd like. But um, great point, Randall. Um, really good point. And we, we know that um, we want to stay out in front of that issue. I think I think the you know the traffic and and the uh, roundabout are probably in that um, category of let's make sure those um, are addressed outright at the front. Um, kind of kind of like um, we were saying about this is the 
athletic field, and that's important to say that right out front. Um, um, Simon, I, I don't want to interrupt you. I just, um, if, if uh, you all are done talking, if you could mute. I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing Stephen. There you go. Thanks. Um, and uh, so as a part of this project, those improvements aren't taking place, the expansion of the roundabout. We do have a traffic uh, study, traffic report that also takes into account the uh, project downstream at the aquatic center. So we're we're very aware of, of that as a uh, constraint, we'll call it. And what we're going to do is just make sure that when we lay things out, we're not precluding that down the road. Okay, great. Um, for other uh, folks on staff, is there any any other comment that you wanted to make? Anything that came up through discussion that you wanted to address, or um, any opportunities or challenges that you you want to make sure that we're we're addressing to you? Yeah, Megan. I just wanted to share that um, I'm so happy to hear everybody have uh, great value in the Nashville area as we've been working on that site for at least since 2014. It might be a little sooner. I don't have my spreadsheet in front of me. And so it, it's going to be, I think, a great opportunity to have that connectivity to all the restoration work we're doing around the site, uh, around, around the area with all the other parks. Um, so I'm excited for that educational opportunities and for people to see it up close. And then it's, um, things that I think of overall, I'm just happy to have all this engagement because at the end of the day, Tony and I will be there to be able to maintain that this site and be able to take care of it and just hope that it's built safe and with all the ideas that you guys are bringing forward. Yeah, that's really beautifully said. Um, yeah, Jeff. Yeah, the, the only thing I had was just, I, I know we have quite a few challenges here and everybody's working hard on them, but just for everybody to keep in mind that the site itself is, is a challenge to get everybody what they want and what they need. I know we have a, uh, a, lot, a lot of needs for fields and stuff, and it, I think the site has a chance to be a great combo of things, but uh, just please keep in mind that, that we're all here to, to to do the best we can for the community and that the, the site itself can can be challenging. Yeah, and I'll just add maybe to piggyback on that, that um, that's our challenge is to try and try and, uh, you know, uh, make the most out of the the site that's given us and and sort of balance all those uh, programmatic desires um and um so that's a challenge there's also quite a lot of soil on the site that we're gonna have to figure out where to put it um that's a technical challenge um but uh, on the flip side um I, I know i can speak for andrew uh, and matt on this call as well um we're just thrilled to be working on this project and um we really have a goal to um, to learn from you guys and learn from the public, and we really want this to be, you know, the park or Lake Oswego. And and we know there's a lot of competing sometimes um, uh, desires, and and um, our our task will be to you know keep our eye on the ball and keep the main thing the main thing here. Um, but we really. We really want to um, have everybody be heard and feel like they're part of this process so that everybody, um, you know, kind of at least it's, uh, you know, clear minded about how we got to the, the final product that we, we get to, whatever that looks like. So. Great. Um, anyone else on the, the Lake Oswego side, any any sort of last thoughts before we get into our, our next steps, what we'll be doing for our next meeting? I'm just super excited that we're moving forward and, and um, I, you know, the, the main thing here is uh, um, that, uh, you know, I'm glad that uh, Stephen chose to share a, a rough schedule for this and um, I know, you know, one of the, the, the biggest things for me um, is, you know, that it takes time to get from where we are now to actually having the field and the park open. And um, I'm glad that, that Stephen shared that. And 
Um, I'll, I'll be frank with everybody. It frustrates me as much as it probably frustrates you. So um, I wish it, the process went faster, but it is the process. So, and I appreciate the the thoughtful consideration, um, especially in in the context uh, that everybody's talking about and the interconnectivity to um, the other properties, uh, Lake Ridge High School. And the other parks properties that are around it. I think that that's really important to keep in mind that, you know, in addition to the Lake Ridge um, High School site and the uh, school district sites and all the city sites, um, we also, this, this property is interconnected with uh, metro natural area sites. And, and when you start looking at that overall campus um, and canvas that, that it is, um, th this is a uh, a really integral part of that and keeping that um, contextual vision of, of that is I think important and you know when we're talking about uh, more naturalistic of, of the ball fields you know I I think of you know not that Hazelia by any means is is a, not an attractive setting but um, like East Waluga is one of the most attractive you know athletic field settings I, I, I think I've I've seen in a community so I appreciate the the comments. I appreciate the input, and I'm looking forward to the continued input um, from this group. Great, thank you, Evan. Um, in terms of our next steps, um, the next meeting uh, we were a little bit behind the curveball in terms of we had our first open house and then reviewed it with you. But for this next meeting, we're going to have the open house put together and then you'll review before it goes live. That way you can help us think through the questions, make sure that we're really thinking through everything. Um, and then also what we're really hoping is that you can help us get the word out um, because, you know, we'll do the same. Uh, type of outreach that we did before in terms of signs and digitally, but uh, word of mouth, um, encouraging your leads and your folks in your community to take it is, is really the best way for us to get a robust participation. Um, is there, I just open it up for Stephen, um, Zach, or Jenny, Ivan, anything that I'm forgetting for our next meeting that you want to make sure we earmark? Nothing. Okay, well then let me uh, just end with an apology. I forgot to give everyone a break. And so I'm really sorry we ended up having a great discussion. I loved hearing from you, but lessons learned for us next time when we go forward in the agenda, there'll definitely be a break in the middle so that we're not we're not here the whole time. So thank you all so much for your patience, for your contribution and your thoughts. And um, I'm looking forward to talking with you all later. And if again, if you have any questions in between, please reach out to Jenny. Um, her email is right there and please check out the website. And so with that, I will go ahead and adjourn us. Thank you. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Thanks, everyone.